Cooler Master's latest mechanical keyboard offers a brand new tiny bezel design and low profile Sherry MX Red linear switches. Is it any good? Let's find out. Hey, how is it going guys? My name is Robin and on this channel you'll find PC hardware and gaming peripherals and so if you're interested in that consider subscribing and don't forget to tap the notification bell so that you don't miss out on future videos. Now have you ever tried low profile mechanical switches? If so, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Today, yeah we gotta be looking at the SK630 from Cooler Monster. This keyboard actually comes in three different sizes. We got the biggest one which is the SK650 for 150 US dollars. This is the full size model. We're also getting a 60% one with Bluetooth. And finally, we got this the SK630, which is the tanky less version without numpad. What characterizes the SK series among the competition is first and foremost the compact design, the much thinner bezels, the brushed aluminum plate, the floating keycaps, and the low profile design. And compared to a standard keyboard such as the Ducky 1 2 Mini without using its legs. The Ducky is about 1 cm taller. In terms of specs, we're looking at a keyboard fitted with Sherry MX Red low profile switches. The main materials are aluminum for the top plate and the base is made of plastic. We got 6 key rollover with anti ghosting and double shot keycaps, RGB lightning, and a pulling rate and a response time of 8000 Hz. The onboard memory lets you store up to 4 profiles in the Cooler Master Portal software. And yeah, we're gonna dive into the software a bit later in this video. We also find an on the fly system that lets you do all sorts of things such as multimedia control, macro recording, and light lightning control and yeah we gonna touch more on this in a second as well that said there are no dedicated buttons here for the media keys so in order to skip tracks and adjust the volume for example you have to use the function key for that that looks like a cooler master logo the sk series is fitted with sherry mx red low profile key switches which has a reduced travel distance and actuation point but with the same signature durability and precision as to the traditional Sherry Red. And while the traditional switch has a 2mm actuation point and 4mm total travel distance and 45 grams of force to activate the switch, the Sherry MX Low Profile on the other hand has a very shallow profile and although it still requires the same 45 grams of force, both the actuation point and total key travel distance have been shortened by 0.8 centimeters, and so essentially from 2 millimeters for the standard one down to 1.2 which is the same actuation point as the Sherry MX Speed Silver and in case you're wondering if you would feel any difference here my answer is yes guys so much that at first I was actually questioning whether I was gaming on a set of mechanical switches to begin with but the biggest difference here is not the travel distance in itself it's more like how this low keycap differentiates from a normal keycap I think and how they bottoms out whereas the low keycaps has a wider base and therefore feels a bit mushier in a way when you press it all the way down to its fullest so what happens if you put o-ring dampeners on these the result is by far the most silent keyboard i have ever tried and so if you're looking for something very quiet for your office space for example this keyboard with o-ring dampeners is a home run here is a quick sound test On top of the board we find a sleek top plate made of brushed aluminum which gives the keyboard a very stylish high end look and although the base is entirely made of plastic it still makes the keyboard very solid and rigid. The unboxing was quite enjoyable and I think Cooler Master has done a great job when packing it, putting the keyboard in a nice velvet punch and this is something you can store it in whenever you're traveling. That being said I was however a bit disappointed when I first realized that there was no palm rest in 
included. This is however not the end of the world because of the much sleeker profile here. A palm rest wouldn't have enriched the experience much as he would have put my hands in an awkward angle. In the end I think something that does bother me a bit more however is the lack of angle adjustment cause there are no legs here so you can't adjust the tilt angle and while I wasn't too bothered with this at first I do kinda miss it now after a while I've been switching between the Ducky 1 2 Mini and the SK630 a few times back and forth. Now I don't know what made Cooler Masters escape this entirely as I feel like it would have been such a big pricey increase to include legs on it and so I just don't understand this decision. Anyway let's move on let's talk about the key switches and the keycaps because this is something you guys need to know about. The keycaps are about 0.5 centimeters wider than normal keycaps and they are almost completely flat much like laptop keycaps and yeah this is important to know because it completely changes the experience more than you probably would think. I gotta be honest here it took me a couple of days of getting used to this and still to this day I fully haven't figured out how to type on this yet without having to look at the keys every once in a while and this is coming from someone that haven't been doing that for years and on top of that I am typing on a laptop on a daily basis as well so this is not the flat keys in itself it is the size of them that messes with me the most and something that's really cool about this keycap is that they are double shot keycaps unlike printed keycaps that you normally typically find on keyboards these days. This keycap have two layers of plastic molded into each other and the end result is a key which will never fade out or ship off even after heavy use. Here's a quick sound test. In terms of lightning and RGB, there's tons of it, up to 20 profiles that can be fully customized either on the fly or on the software itself. Let's say you don't want to install Cooler Master software in order to change the RGB profiles etc, you don't have to do that. Simply hold down the function key and press either the double teaming RGB buttons to change the colors to red, blue or green or you can switch between the profiles and you can even set the speed how fast the color should cycle here. If you decide to use the software it is pretty easy to use but it took me a few minutes to get the hang of it. By default this is what it looks like. You got LED, macro, key map and profiles. Now this is something that's very odd and something you don't typically see but by default almost every RGB pattern is activated so you have to go in and manually go over and inactivate each of the 20-ish RGB modes unless you don't want your keyboard to simply cycle through each one of them like this. Anyway you can choose between a wide range of modes here, I think it's about 20 or so and each mode can be customized where you can set the speed of the animation, the colors and in which direction the animation should spin in etc. You also got the brightness of the lightning here as well. Once you get the hang of it, this software does what it's supposed to but it feels a bit buggy at times but I'm sure Cooler Monster works on improving this. As for the cable, I'm glad that Cooler Master decided to go with USB Type-C for this one, so in case you are on the run quite a lot, you essentially only need to bring your cell phone cable and you can use the same cable here very conveniently, but yeah unfortunately there is no USB pass-through, which I definitely think could have been included for this price. It is 120 US dollars after all. And so to try and wrap this up guys, if you're looking for a solid high quality made keyboard and and you're specifically after something silent in a small form factor, you're going to love the SK series from Cooler Monster. It's a high quality keyboard and it's very nice to both look at and type on. It's nice and refreshing to be able to adjust the lightning without the need of a software, but the lack of dedicated USB pass through, dedicated media buttons and tilting options is something you should be aware of before purchase. For $150 for the full size model and 120 for the tanky less version, it is on the more expensive side, but if you're looking for a silent small factor keyboard, this is as good as it gets. Now that being said, if you're looking for a pure gaming keyboard, there are better
better options out there in my opinion and so if you are not fully sold on low key cap keyboards definitely try this out in a store first before buying it otherwise there is a chance you might get disappointed here and with that said I conclude this review on the SK series from Cooler Master I'm gonna be back guys with a brand new video in just a day or two until then have an awesome day right